Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. Spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in the sight of in his sight. In love he predestined us, predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have, have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were all chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a little bit about adoption. Murray and I were not fortunate to have children, but we had the opportunity to adopt. It was a trying situation. It lasted forever, but it was worth every minute of it. And that's how God looks at us. He has chosen us for the, for, before the creation, before time. He selected us. He chose us. We did not choose him. We have free will. Election and predestination is way over my head. Very hard to explain. But you have to have faith to understand that God gives every individual the right to become a child of God. Our daughter Jocelyn had no idea when she was six years old in Central America of Honduras that Murray and myself, God had planned for us to adopt her. But thank God that happened and we followed through. Like I said, it was worth every minute. Just like Urban said in his morning prayer, it's hard to believe that my generation and your generation, the generation that's coming after us, that times have really changed, especially this day and time, with so many things going on, with the, the viruses, with the A virus, the racial uh, within our country that's just, it's hard to explain. And all the other things that's happening in our world. We all have opinionators. We want to be Monday morning quarterbacks and correct everything. But only God's going to do that in his set time. I have no idea what the bar will bring in our country. Thank God for grace and his mercy that he shines down on each and every one of us. 
on every day that we have. We can question his uh, motives. We can question how he allows sin and destruction and all the things that happen in our country. But he's in control. He always has been. He always will be. He's the one who will take charge when it's time to take charge. We read about it. We hear about it. We see on the, uh, the monster in the corner of our living rooms with the big color screen. Uh, everybody has different opinions. But God wants us to be more holy like Him and blameless and self-controlled. But He lists a number of these spiritual blessings within Ephesians. Paul is in prison when he writes to the, the Ephesians in Ephesus. Philippians, Galatians, and Philemon, he writes while he's in prison. Some call these the prison letters. Can you imagine a, being in prison? Not much, not very much freedom. Freedom is a big topic today. It's in our newspapers this week, a lot about freedom. Freedom has a lot to do with the last time I spoke about the military. About we fight for this freedom that we have. A lot of people on the streets today are fighting for this freedom and they don't realize how much freedom has cost us, how many lives it's cost us. It's a terrible thing that's happening about people being killed, but we have to pray. We have to ask God to take control like He always does. Some of these spiritual blessings, I just touched on one about chosenness and adoption. And this, then he talks about grace. He lavishes grace on each one of us. I want to uh, outline that like an ice cream cone. We all like ice cream. Uh, over at Bubba's, when I was a child, we used to go over to Bubba's. But when your ice cream melted and it run down the side, that's to me is lavishing. That's the grace that God have, gives us. In our Sunday school class, I've told Rita and the other, uh, I, li I like that when it runs down the side. And that's why God gives that grace and mercy for each and every one of us that we don't deserve. It runs down the side and he covers us from our sins and our iniquities. Scott said last week, a week before last, that nothing can separate from the love of God. Nothing can pluck us out of His hands. Another thing I like is God has a picture on His refrigerator of each and every one of us that He looks at each day. And I like that. But God, it was a price for us on His grace and mercy. He spoke very simply creation into being, but it cost Him dearly to, to save us, to offer salvation for us. This mystery that God, that Paul talks about through the Ephesians, this mystery that we have, this gospel that we, we hear so much about and we hear preached on Sunday about. Scott, all, Scott, he brings it forward. I had a person ask me about our bulletin. I think I said this last time, but I'll be repetitive and pre repeat it again about on our bulletin it says the lost. And a person wanted to know what that meant. Why did they put those names under the lost? You know, salvation, <laughs> that's the number one thing that we have to be preached about on Sunday is the lost and the ones that don't know Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Every name should be on that paper, on our bulletin, that does not know Him, that's not a member of His family, of the body of Christ. Amen? And 
we, we talk about the blood that was shed for us. The remission of sins and the redemption that God paid for. That's the bolts and nuts of the gospel. The blood that Christ shed for us. Though we have the opportunity to receive his mystery, the gospel. And the truth, the truth will set you free, is all about the gospel. I know our president, he talks about the truth a lot. Some disagree, some agree, some disapprove, some approve. But we all know the truth if we know God. If we know the Lord, we know His Son and what He has done for each and every one of us. That truth, His Word. We need to read His Word, to study His Word, to memorize His Word, and to act on His Word. Obey His Word, obedience. I've often said that obedience and praise, they go together. God sent His Son Jesus into the world that we might receive redemption and forgiveness of sins and become holy and blameless, adopted children of God. I heard a story one time, a guy asked a little fellow, he said, uh, have you found Jesus? And the young boy said, I didn't know he was lost. He found me. He found, he found all of us. He's looking for each one of us right now. He chose us for the beginning. He's still looking. The spiritual blessings in Christ that, that we have from the heavenlies, that is today. Not just one, but the thousands that he's blessed us with. He continues to bless us each day. That he shines on the rain. He rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. But he's always looking for someone that is lost. That's looking for him. Searching. We've been saved we have and we will continue to be saved each and every day. We fall short, but God is reaching out each day so we will be more like Him, more blameless, and more holy when we continue to read His Word, search His Word, and obey His Word. On this Father's Day, let us remember that He is the true Father, the one and only Father that is offered this eternal life to each one of us. Let us search out for individuals that names to be on our bulletin that are lost. Maybe one day we'll have so many names on that bulletin that people will say, oh my, wouldn't that be great that people will, won't have to ask why they're on there because they're lost? It is because we are praying for them that they will understand and come to know the true and one God, the living God, that we know. Amen? Amen. Let us close with prayer before we sing our closing uh, hymn. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we just, we lift up to you. We just thank you that we have the opportunity to come and even be outside where it's just a beautiful day that uh, we have to come and listen. And, uh, in spite of me, uh, you speak through me. If it's one here today that uh, doesn't know you, that is, uh, that's backslidden, that is, uh, that needs you to come to him, man and give him directions and instructions. Shower down your grace and mercy so much it just lavishes over them like an ice cream cone. 
forgive us for our shortcomings and our sins. And you always cover that with the blood of our holy and precious Lord. Be with the ones who have lost loved ones. Be with the ones that have lost fathers this Father's Day. Be with each, each one of them as they remember their fathers. Which are a precious time that they feel their chair within their family and feel their will. And let us to where we are today. Give us the guidance and the instructions to follow you. We're glad of that. We're thankful for that. We lift up your name. We ask this in Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. Y'all have a blessed Father's Day.